Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for coming back, joining us on the program here. Uh, if you've been following along with the build, you know that we just put a brand new Dana 60 rear end in the back of the Dart and I'm braking in street gears right now. So I got to do a lot of driving. Uh, they want me to drive it for about 500 miles before I actually race it. And I got like another week to go. I've been driving it this uh, past week and I'm noticing now that my air fuel ratio, it's running pretty rich just for cruising. It's kind of set up on a race tune and uh, 500 miles in like two weeks time is quite a bit of driving for me in this car. I normally do like 500 miles uh, through the six months the car's on the road and then the rest of the time it's all drag racing. So it being fat for the little bit I drive around on the street, I'm not too concerned about it, but putting 500 miles on in two weeks, it's just killing my budget right now. I gotta run high test, so I'm paying for expensive gas and I need to get a little bit better of an air fuel ratio going. So I'm actually gonna do a carb jet change. I'm leaning out the primary side only. Uh, I'm not even dipping into the secondaries at this point in time. Uh, that'll be another week or so and then we can really start hammer on it and at that time I'll probably switch back but I am going to monitor my gauge because it is also about 10 to 20 de well, about 10 degrees Canadian hotter which is about 20 degrees degrees American hotter than it was when we dyno tuned the engine so hotter air it's going to run a little richer already we're just street, street cruising it right now so a primary jet change is a good thing I currently have 73s in it. I'm gonna drop down to a set of 71s and then go for a cruise and see how that affects that wideband O2. Uh, I think I have showed you guys that in the channel before I run a wideband O2 full time in the car. Kind of always monitor air fuel ratio. Um, it's how I originally set up my carburetor before I went to a dyno. So if you bought a brand new carburetor and you wanna get the most out of it, a wideband O2 is 100% the way you do that. Uh, there is no better way other than being on a dyno to tune a carburetor as efficiently. Uh, a dyno uses a wideband O2, they usually use at least two, one on each bank, or if you go to a really high-end dyno, they'll have one in every cylinder right in the exhaust and then monitor every cylinder for the absolute best air-fuel ratio to get the most horsepower, which is what we did, but it's kind of killing me on the street. So we're gonna crack open the Holly and change out a couple jets and then we'll go for a cruise and make sure it's working right for us. Okay, air cleaner come off. This is that custom air cleaner I made. I uh, saw that in another video. It uses a Mopar guy, but a K&N filter. Made my own base. It's a nice unit. Fun fact, the amount of volume and gas in your float bowl is equivalent to about the cap off a spray can. So these work really well to drain your float bowl. There's definitely a rag under here. A couple rags around. Okay, so here we can see our main jets and they are the 73s that we had on the dyno. I haven't touched them since this thing had a dyno tune, uh, but like I mentioned before, doing this to try to get a little better fuel economy and uh, just clean it up driving around town just a little. I'll probably put it back to these 73s. Uh, come race day because I know that was my hot tune, but for the next week or so we're gonna run a 71 So let's swap those guys out and always good to use an actual Holly jet tool to do this much better than a screwdriver uh, Fits the jet perfectly and then you don't screw up the ends on them And they are all number stamped there you can see the 73 on it and into the trusty Holly jet tool kit uh, looking for some 71s, if I put them in the right spot, uh, looks like I got two right here. Bingo. 71s going in. This is why AN lines are so nice. You 
Okay, now I can just fill the float bowl through the vent and we'll get a good fire up. Okay, so now we got our jet change done. Um, so originally when I'd be cruising around, I was seeing a lot of 12. I was seeing at 12 just on light acceleration. And even when I dip into it just a little, uh, I'd see like uh, 11, five to 12 and then around 2,000, 2,500 RPM where I'm kind of cruising at, you know, doing uh, about 30, 40 miles an hour, I guess. Um, I'm seeing 12 dead even. It goes up a little bit, maybe 12.5. I'm looking to get about a half a point to three quarters of a point, looking to be more around the 13. Uh, just a little bit cleaner of a burn and, you know, save a couple bucks at the gas tank too. Hopefully this will do it. Uh, we'll fire it up, make sure we got no leaks, and then we'll back it out and uh, hit the street. up around 13, not 12 where it was at before. Okay, she's got some heat in her now. We're ready to hit the street. Uh, I got the GoPro in the car. I don't know if you'll be able to see the wideband gauge from the GoPro, but I'll give you guys updates how it's going, and, uh, and maybe we'll try to get some action on that gauge too, let you see how it works. Let's go. Okay, so we're ready to go. Idle's going a little fatter as it does as it gets warmed up. More of a 13.5 kind of, 13, 13.5 kind of zone, so we'll monitor that too. Our jet change should not affect that though.
Anyways, we're back home now and I was very happy with how that test drive went. Uh, you can see what kind of an impact just two jet size change can make. That's why running one of those wideband O2s is so important. A lot of guys will buy a carburetor and they won't ever change the jets. So you could be running it rich and wasting gas and not getting the horsepower you want, or you could even be running it lean and you could actually potentially damage something. So wideband O2, definitely worth the investment. So like I said, I'm gonna roll it with this jetting as it is, and then before race day, I'll do some wide open throttle runs down the highway and really tune it in. A uh, little backstory on that, when I first put this carb on here, when I put that 420 horsepower package together, uh, that's how I tuned the carburetor, just highway rips, checking that thing. I actually filmed it, would check the footage, make adjustments and go from there. And when I got it onto the dyno, finally, we made a jet change of one jet size, which is very small. The dyno guy was even quite impressed. You remember my buddy, my buddy Pete there, the dyno guy? He was quite impressed with how close I had it just from doing that. So definitely worth the money. Uh, that's gonna close it up for this video. I might put that mechanical fan back on. It got pretty hot on that cruise. That was about 35 miles I just did there. Uh, but we got more street cruising coming up and we got racing coming up as soon as this rear end is broken. See you guys on the next one.